Welcome to the Natural Health Podcast. We bring awareness of sustainable health in the business hustle space. Natural Health Podcast is perfect for the high-performing business-minded individuals who want to work with their biochemistry to achieve success and optimal health. It's Friday, which means it's time for French strength facts about health, business, and overall success. In today's episode, we talk to Mark Curry, founder of Sevy Beverages Health Drinks. Mark left his legal career working in a top-tier law firm to become a nutritionist and disrupt unhealthy industries that have not been shaken up for decades. Thanks to breakthroughs in science and creative thinking, Mark was able to start several companies and formulate the products of many more. Through reimagining products, Mark has formulated award-winning health energy drinks, alcoholic and non-alcoholic kombucha, non-alcoholic beneficial beer, protein powders, vegan foods, collagen supplements, and nootropics. Mark takes functional beverages to a new level using breakthroughs in nutrition to allow products to have scientifically validated benefits. In a world demanding more from their food and drinks, having fortified and healthy food and drinks couldn't be better. A few of his hobbies, he absolutely loves mental health and the whole aspect of mental health. He also used to work as a lawyer and when he he was always interested in chemistry nerd, nutrition nerd at his heart because his office used to look like a pharmacy with pills, powders, lining the shelves as he would try and convince his colleagues to try the ingredients that he was trying at the time. He also, his current hobby is to get his PADI, which is like a license to scuba dive properly. When he was doing a night dive a little while ago, he had an amusing encounter with a shark, which made him really feel alive. Welcome to the Natural Health Podcast, Mark. Thank you so much, Rika. And what an amazing introduction. I, I hope I can live up to it. <laughs> it sounds absolutely. You've done a lot of things. A lawyer that's getting faced with sharks, that's making amazing coffee. That's so many things. <laughs> <laughs> well, the shark, the shark one was probably the, the most embarrassing and, and least kind of cool of them. Um, it was just uh, an awkward encounter where it was a nighttime dive and they were like, you're going to see sharks. If you see a glint of green in your torchlight, that's a shark's light. That's a shark's eyes. And I was like, oh, okay. And they said, make sure you turn your torch on yourself and shine yourself. And I was like, that's a good idea. And I was at the edge of a reef and I just was looking out at this like curtain of blackness. I'm like, wow, that's like the, the open sea. And I just sort of put my torch out and then I just saw this, this glint of green followed by then like um, emerging like gray barrel of like a shark moving toward me only like three, four meters away. And suddenly, like, the people I was diving with who were maybe five or six metres away, there was only four of them, suddenly felt like a long, long way away. <laughs> and um, so the second I saw that, and then I just like you see, like, the grey, then you start to see, like, the teeth, and you're like, oh, my God. And then I remember, oh, I've got to shine the torch in my face just to show I'm a human, don't come near me. But I didn't close my eyes, being an idiot, like, not really thinking. So all I did is blinded myself within, like, <laughs> within metres of this. Anyway. So that was that story. It was just generally quite awkward. And I just got really scared. I was flailing around on the water. We're about 10 metres underwater as well near the Great Barrier Reef. Uh, Nothing ended up happening. Um, And then I couldn't end up seeing the shark afterwards. And then I just zoomed as fast as I could to the middle of the group and I bumped and nuzzled myself in the middle. Um, And they kind of looked at me weirdly. And then afterwards I explained, sorry, I had a moment. Um, Wow. And you still want (laughs) to go in the water. Yeah, well, it was it was really really cool, um, and like it was super super confronting um, with that particular one, just because I wasn't ready and I was so silly. But we then saw loads afterwards and stuff, and it was still pretty pretty full on. But you just you realize, wow, like I'm so out of my my depth, like excuse the pun, um, to kind of be scuba diving. So I thought, wouldn't this be something that I'd love to do? On a, not a professional, but like on a more improved recreational level where I can go to like 20 metres and 30 metres and 40 metres and check out like sea wrecks and things like that. Or shipwrecks, yeah. sorry. A whole um, new world. Yeah. It's a whole new world down there that we still have to discover. Even even um, medicine-wise and supplement-wise, it's a whole new world down there that we can discover and use to benefit our health. Yeah, like that's the kind of stuff that does excite me. Like I came across this article end of last year talking about this puffy seaweed that University of Queensland is utilising to assist with recycling plastic and changing the way that it biodegrades. So instead of taking three to 500 years, it can be much faster. Um, and they, anyway, all these little small things, I'm like, that's really cool. And like that came from the ocean, which we still have so much more to learn about. So 
yeah, so much more, fun. so much more. I love it. I love it. So, look, before we get into today's topic, which I'm so excited about to get you on here to talk about, I wanted to find out a little bit about you. I mean, you know, we know a little bit about you now already. Your face sharks <laughs> and you love them. <laughs> um, but what what have been the key turning points in your journey to get you where you are here today? <laughs> so aside from shitting myself when I see sharks, um, and sorry if I'm meant to swear, um, but yeah, so really what got me here today was a few exciting things in my journey since, do we mean since like university and stuff? Like the last... Yeah, like you're here today, you know, you've got a savvy, the amazing company, um, you know, used to be a lawyer. What gave you the turning points to be like, you know what, I'm going to start and change my career and the turning points in your life where you woke up and you're like, you know what, I'm not going to do what I used to do or what have been little, you know, f- you know, when you get little flicks yeah. in the brain, you're like, no, I'm going to change or do something. So what have been the key turning points in your life? So for me, it was... Um, the reason why I really wanted to become a lawyer, um, if I'm entirely honest, I know it sounds bad and people might judge, is just because I had no idea what else I wanted to do. At uh, high school, um, back when I was doing it, it was ATAR, I think now. Um, it's, sorry, it's called UAI. I think now it's called ATAR and it'll soon be called something else. And so I thought that if I didn't use the results that I got, it would be wasting uh, potential. And then so I ended up going to UTS and doing business and then doing law afterwards. And half the reason I thought law was good was because my sister was doing and I thought it it seemed like something that made me feel smart, which is silly and um, not really appropriate because I didn't consider the career path. I just thought the theory was really interesting and it was a good use of time. Um, I don't regret it um, in hindsight because it was a really good um, degree to learn about how the world kind of works in that respect. But um, uh, about my third or fourth year at university, I was considering dropping out and doing the GAMSAT and studying medicine instead, um, just because I realized that what I really like is things surrounding helping people, especially using some kinds of medicine. And then I realized a little bit more um, when I thought about it, I don't actually need to be a doctor to be able to do that. Um, I can do that through other means, whether it be naturopathy, whether it be nutrition, whether it be dietitian um, or dietetics or other. So there was multiple ways I could do it. So then I started digging in deeper and deeper into what I really like. And some of the turning points for me were going to actual seminars, talking about these kind of things that you can do whatever you want with your life, find your passion, prosper from what really interests you, all that kind of stuff. And I remember the first few times I used to get really upset thinking, shit, like, I, don't, I don't have a passion. Um, and I was so, so jealous of my friends who did. There was a few friends who just wanted to be a radio presenter. And that was a lot of what they wanted to do. And now they work for Triple J. They have their own segment. They're killing it. And I was just like, oh, I wish I had that. Or someone else wanted to be a rugby player and they played for Australia. Like phenomenally lucky examples, I know. But I just love the fact they were like, I want to do this and now I do it. For me, I was like, I don't, don't know what I want to do. I do. I work as a, a lawyer now and I don't know if I like it. And that was the issue I was in. I hated Sunday nights and hated Monday mornings. And I was like, this is just not a good way to live my life. Um, and it wasn't congruent with the way that I really felt that I could be and should be. So I started um, looking into um, self-development, um, self-improvement um, and just self-help kind of stuff. So looking into what I could do differently and how I could improve my life, choices of mindset, ways to, to view my options. And, um, and so that was where it all kind of started. Um, at the time, I was uh, living um, with Open Bonner at the time and there was a few days where I would just call in sick to work and I would write down all these questions that I wanted to ask myself. And I knew I couldn't do it on a weekend. I just needed a day. And some of the questions are, what do I like doing um, when I'm alone by myself? What really interests me and why? Um, it's like this. And you have your first level answer to bubble up to um, your head straight away. And you're like, oh, okay, because of that. And you start like asking like a why ladder of, why do I like that? Why do I like that? Why? And after a while, you start to feel really uncomfortable. It's kind of strange because you realize you're actually getting to properly know yourself and what really does make you tick. And then I realized that what really interests me is being able to um, help others, as I was talking about before, but through utilizing stuff that I'm interested and passionate about, which in this case was nutrition. And so at that stage, I was like, great. 
And I felt amazing and happy and empowered because it was the first realization that, cool, I know what I need to do. I need to quit life as a lawyer and I need to learn nutrition. I need to become a nutritionist and then I need to kind of go in that um, direction uh, and kind of explore that. And so that was the first moment that I actually thought I knew what I was doing, um, which was really lovely and empowering. So I did that through lots of seminars, asking questions, seeking out coaches. I spoke to a ton of coaches and a ton of mentors about what helped them to get to their area. Um, and then eventually I had um, a rough idea and, um, and then that kind of got me through the, the challenging times at uh, working as a lawyer. And then it was the next thing was planning the escape. Um, so I had all these like pills, powders, potions around my office that um, was effectively an idea without even knowing it. And then one day it just kind of clicked. I'm like, hang on, I'm not just going to be a, a general nutritionist. I actually have a product that I can, that I can make. Um, I had friends coming to my office all the time going, oh, Mark, can you make one of your drinks? Can you make me one of your powders? And so I realized that they all, real, um, they all really liked it. And I knew what was in it and I tried to explain them why it's great. And they're just like, like, sorry, mate, not interested. Um, and I was like, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. And so, but I knew it worked and I knew I was using stuff based on science. And so I was like, well, why don't I actually just make this? This doesn't exist in Australia. There was one or two that existed like over in America and one in the UK at the time. I'm going like four and a half years I'm back, by the way, like five years. So I then thought, great, okay. So I started making the very basic first version of what was ultimately turned into a savvy drink. Um, so that was really fun. So instead of my secretary coming in and being like, mate, you're more of a chemist than, and then a lawyer. Um, one day, yeah, I listened to her and my friends and I tended my resignation. Day one at my computer, Google searching how to start a nutrition company. Um, and then I couldn't afford rent, had to move back home to my parents. They thought I was having a quarter life crisis um, and then started, started the process. And then along the way, ended up helping uh, nutrition companies make protein and collagen supplements. I got involved in kombucha and alcoholic kombucha. And we, were, and we started researching and developing Australia's first tea-based spirit, like a vodka made from tea leaves. Pretty cool. Um, and then, yeah, and then moved away from all that again and then went straight back to Savvy recently. And probably a very long answer to your question. But no, I, love, I, love that you, I love that you gave so much detail. And the reason why is because we underestimate how many individuals are currently in the shoes that you were in, where they're like, you know what? I've just done this degree. I've spent maybe three, four, five years doing this. And, you know, this is who I'm meant to be. This is who I am. And I've made, I've become this identity. And then they're like, but it's not my calling. It doesn't light up that fire. And it's very hard for individuals to be like, I'm going to put that aside um, and, and, and move on and do something that I like that might just be in someone's eyes, a TAFE degree, let's say, for example, someone might be want to be a carpenter or a builder. And there's, and, and it's, it's just what we've been brainwashed to believe that we need to be that one thing and be that. Um, but it's good that you expressed what you did and you moved on, you moved on and you did your own thing, which I absolutely love. And, and you just decided to listen to what lights your fire and you finally found what lights your fire, which is amazing. And, and that's awesome that you've shared that with us. And you've had a lot of key turning points in your life to get you here now. Um, and, and going through it all, I guess your perception of success and health would have changed. So what does success and health look like for you right now, Mark? So it's, it's definitely changed as, as it always does. And, and what I found really interesting as well is what was a success for me five years ago is different to what it is today. And so I think that was another thing that I really liked, the idea that things can consistently change and evolve. And just because you've done something doesn't mean you have to do it forever. Uh, at any one stage, you can just stop, dust off and start again. Uh, if you look on um, the internet, you'll find a multitude of amazing stories of people who started their huge career that they're known for later in life. Like Samuel L. Jackson, I think, started acting like 40 or 50. Um, there's all these phenomenal examples of people who found their niche. They found their area to really hit hard later in life. Um, and I think that's kind of cool. So I might not even be in my main area. I have no idea. Um, all I know is I'm starting the journey and I'm loving that. And so it's really, really cool. Um, so success to me is basically just being able to 
it sounds like a cliche thing, but I heard this as a quote a while ago and I always just thought that kind of stuck with me. Um, so for me, happiness is utilizing passion. It's doing the things that you're, you know, that deep down you really can do and you should be doing. And I always like the idea of success or the idea of heaven, if we believe in that, or the idea of like a perfect life is getting to the end of your life and then seeing a shadow of who you could have been and you see yourself exactly as you are looking back at you. While the idea of someone, um, unfortunately, as hell or um, an unvaluable life is seeing the person you could have been and you're not a shadow of that person. So I know it sounds like a really weird cliche version, but for me, it's always just thinking, what can I do to maximize my time in the moment? And I'm always trying to push myself to, to try and get more things done. And everyone's different. So I know some people get on their high horse and they say, you always need to get up at 4 a.m. in the morning and just crunch all day, go to bed at 11 p.m., sleep in five hours. And it's all this crazy stuff, which not many people can do. Like if you're super lucky and you have a, that mutated gene so you can sleep in like a short amount of time, brilliant. For the average person, you can't. You've got to make sacrifices. So I'm boring now and I go to bed around 8, 8, 39. Um, I like that you say you're boring now and you're saying 839. I thought I was boring, boring about 930, 10. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You're a party animal. Uh, oh, I'm shower. crossing the line. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's all these, it's all these little things. You, you work out what, what makes sense for you. So, so success to me is just using my time wisely. So, and taking every opportunity that I can. Um, and it's just feeling like finding a balance for my physical and mental health. So it's kind of encompassing all those things at the same time. So I don't want my success either to be a selfish endeavor. Um, so that's another thing that I think is ultra important. Um, some people feel that they need to succeed and be a front runner. Um, and unfortunately, the sacrifices made on the way are often family or friends or those, those who are generally needy. So I have no issue with trying to help out um, family and friends when they need it. Um, Savvy currently um, donates proceeds to charity, um, which I know for a startup isn't the smartest move in the world because we don't have heaps of money. But like at what stage you go ahead and just flick on and go, now's the profit line that I can start giving money away. Like I figure do it from day one. Um, it's always a percentage. So as you grow, the, the amount that you give grows, but either way, it's always just that small percent and it always just feels kind of good to be giving back and doing the right thing. So yeah, to answer the question of success, it's just about maximizing my potential um, and not at the expense of anyone or anything, but actually for the benefit of everyone and everything. Yeah, I love that. I love that you summarized that at the end. And you're right with, with in regards to us giving back. Um, I, was, I used to listen to a lot of, um, well, I still do, you know, development and things like that. And the interesting thing is that you said is like, when do you click and go, I'm going to give? We're always supposed to be giving. Um, the universe works in a, in a, in a circle, in a you know, karmic cycle. If we just nice. stop giving, that means the cycle stops with us and we hold that. We just have to keep that moving, keep giving and keep receiving, keep giving and keep receiving because it's both. Even if you stop receiving, you're stopping the cycle. And that's some, sometimes really hard for people who are selfless to understand also. We're supposed to receive and we're supposed to give. And that's exactly what you're doing. And I love that. And that's, and that's, and that, that's part of your definition of success. So that, that's amazing. That's beautiful. Um, so let's get into today's topic. I'm so, so excited <laughs> because we're going to be talking coffee and um, I'm living here. Well, I live in Melbourne, but I'm living just a bit regional over Melbourne now. But we know that Melbourne is like the coffee place, the coffee culture of Australia. Anywhere you go, you're bound to get an absolutely amazing coffee. Um, and the topic today we're going to talk about is changing the coffee scene to increase your performance. To start off, let's talk about the current coffee culture here in Australia. What would you say it is and where did you see room for improvement? So uh, I actually quite like the coffee in Australia. Like, and apparently from a global scale, we do really, really well. Like you often hear about people saying coffee in Australia actually is great. Uh, apparently we're kind of coffee snobby. Um, so from that perspective, in, in terms of taste and knowledge of coffee, I think it's really, really good. Um, in terms of the area for improvement, um, I think the only way that we can really improve is when we consider the, the type of coffee that we, that we have. Um, I don't think there's enough conversation around fair trade, um, nor is there enough of a conversation around organic. 
And the reason why I'm harping on about organic, which I know some people just get really bored of, is tea and coffee are amongst the most heavily sprayed crops. Most people don't know this. So your barista doesn't go ahead and wash the beans off in the sink before he goes ahead and, um, or he or she, um, or neither, um, goes ahead and actually grinds them and prepares them. Um, they actually will go ahead um, and just grind them and it goes into your cup. So you might be ingesting, unbeknownst to you, up to 500 to 1,000 different chemicals, which when I'm meant to really be ingesting, I'm talking herbicides, pesticides, fungicides, insecticides, different um, uh, derivatives of the artificial uh, fertilizers that are being used. The list goes on and on and on. So tea and coffee, there's loads of that in them. So going organic for those, phenomenally good move. I'm so um, glad. I'm next- so glad you mentioned that. So glad you mentioned that. That's when someone says to me that coffee, you know, is good, is bad. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. it depends. Are we talking first of all <laughs> organic coffee? Let's just go back to the basics because like uh, I think I made a podcast uh, a few months ago and I said, well, uh, you, you may be drinking a cup of toxins every morning. And most people are well, drinking yes, okay, a cup of toxins every morning. They're having a cup of toxins every morning. And yes, it may be giving them energy, but what else is it doing? And people go, Look, let me add that supplement in. No, 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 no. Let's, what's your coffee like in the morning first? Because we need to remove that first before we even add on any supplements. And so that's, again, like another issue as well as the, the type of coffee from the organic part alone. It's hugely, hugely important because the type of conditions the coffee is grown in traditionally should be in like forest or jungle style environments. But because of the way that we now consume it on such a global scale, instead of it being grown in its conditions that it should be, it has been genetically modified. So we can instead bulldoze massive areas of land and grow it in the sun where it shouldn't be grown um, under like artificially irrigated variations. So just going ahead and doing whatever we can to get the fastest yield, adding additional things to fertilizer and soil, which aren't necessarily healthy, but help to speed it up. Um, And so when we get our end product, it's so different from what it should be. Um, So when you go for an organic coffee, it's actually grown in the proper conditions. Um, The taste is different. The quality is different. It's really important to me because I'm already adding um, additional ingredients to improve the nutritional value of the coffee. So having an organic coffee base was hugely important. Um, But as well, fair trade is something that's not discussed nearly as much as it should be. Because most of the coffee that we're getting, it's from countries that are second world or third world, where they don't have the same standards um, of labor that we have in Australia. So a lot of people forget that and don't actually consider the fact that the people who are actually picking our beans, um, I know it's co- they're actually seeds, not beans, but nonetheless, um, and going ahead and preparing everything. So over in wherever it might be, it might be in Uganda, it might be in Papua New Guinea, it might be in Honduras. I'm just naming the places that um, I get my coffee from. Um, They may or may not be given like fair, appropriate wages. The um, areas um, that are actually around the farms, a lot of people don't consider the offflow from the artificial fertilizers that are polluting the nearby water supplies. There's a multitude of factors that when you have um, a fair trade organization assisting, they're actually looking after the farmers, the family, the community, the area, there's, and you pay a little bit more, sure, but you're paying for people's um, like health and safety in areas that without them, you wouldn't have your coffee. So if you like your coffee, it's fair enough to want to add an extra couple cents, like cents, not much, um, to make sure they're looked after. So that was something else that was really important to us is um, everything from the idea of savvy, again, to the definition of success, everything was working with that idea. Everything that we do should be for the benefit of others as much as we can, um, whether that's the environment or whether it's people. Um, yeah. so and it's so interesting that is- you said about the fair work, uh, sorry, the fair trade coffee. I-, I love that because we don't consider when we're drinking that coffee, those individuals, like you said, if they're working with non-organic, can you imagine the off gases? Can you imagine the chemicals in the air, their water? And their water isn't, I'm not sure if it's I'm 100% right, but I'm guessing they wouldn't have too much access to water like we do. You turn the tap on, here's water. Their water that they have, the limited amount is now contaminated because of this coffee, which is their income, which is them trying to live. Um, it just goes on and on and on. Like we go into a rat race and like, you know, like in 
digging so much deeper and deeper to um, the whole chain line of how coffee is brought to our desk. Yeah, it's 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 quite sad to think that there are people who spend their days um, in the sun surrounded by insecticides, pesticides, fungicides, herbicides, artificial fertilizers, which have horrific effects on your body. All day long they're breathing in those fumes, they're surrounded by it, it pollutes their nearby water supplies, it affects their food, it affects their life, um, they're not given fair wages. I like guess, and they're often working at a younger age than what they should be. Yeah, it's it's pretty horrible. So, so at least we you can do, do we- is buy organic, fair trade, which you're helping your body so much, but you're also yeah. helping those individuals. Yeah, like it's it's a it's a win win. That's why I'm like it, it doesn't make much sense why why you wouldn't want to like. You can often see it in certain shops as well. Like the organic might be an extra. 20 cents, 50 cents more, but it's it's so minor in our budget and the difference is enormous from a health perspective but also a humanitarian perspective. So it's a big win-win on both sides. Um, so the coffee culture in Australia, though, all in all, phenomenal for taste but does need those two things to be probably more in the forefront of conversation. And the last thing I'd probably consider is um, we're pioneering a new space of adding things to coffee at a mainstream level to improve it for effects. This is starting to happen more and more, which is great. Like um, I know yourself, you're mentioning um, that you like adding a few things to your coffee to try and improve its nutritional value. This is a, a more common thing that I'm hearing about, which I absolutely adore. So that would be the only last thing I'd want to do is for people to realize they can add a few little things to their, their morning cup or midday or whatever it is for them to make it even healthier. Um, cause that's the whole idea of it, right? Like it's a functional drink, um, that helps to wake us up and feel amazing. So I want to add a few more things to it to improve that function even more. And then you get everything out of it. Um, yeah. yeah. And you can even yeah. take things out of it. Like no sugar, do not put sugar in your coffee. Oh, absolutely. Because the yeah, bitterness, yeah, yeah. You, you the bitterness is the constitution that makes our, um, activates our body. You put bitter on your tongue, it just activates your digestive system, gets things happening. You go to the bathroom, you get your digestive system happening. If you put that sugar in there, it's not going to do what it's supposed to be there. So you read all the benefits of coffee, but if you're having a coffee with three sugars in there, are you getting those benefits? <laughs> Yeah, so so I'm I'm a big advocate for uh, if we are using sweeteners, um, which I do like. I use um, monk fruit though, um, which it's sold in supermarkets. It's not like a real fringe random thing that you can't get. Coles and all these have it. You can, you can get it online, um, and yeah, it's just it's it's a nutritional um, sweetener as opposed to sugar, which um i try and avoid i'm not like the guy with the pitchfork not going near it um, <laughs> on a hardcore keto diet but I'll, I'll rarely ever add sugar to anything no i love it and yeah monk fruit um is absolutely amazing same with stevia and monk fruit they're definitely um substitutes for sugar that individuals can look into and i guess a lot of food and beverages companies are utilizing this which is so good to see um, instead of that pure sugar or even sucrose or anything along those lines. But we could go into a, such another conversation about that. But, um, <laughs> oh my, that seems like a rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, pull back, Mahela, pull back. <laughs> um, but let's get back onto coffee. Let's get back onto amazing coffee. Um, what effects does coffee itself have on mental performance? I and mean, how does it work in our body? Because a lot of individuals go, you know, after I have that coffee, I feel amazing. Is it placebo or is it real? Like what is actually happening? So from a scientific level, there's quite a few areas we could discuss. Um, I'm just going to keep it brief uh, and just high level and shallow dive um, because I fear otherwise uh, it'll get too nerdy in science. If you can cover that stuff um, later or we can reference it to um, articles I've written about it or um, that already exist. So how it really works is our body throughout the day produces what's called um, adenosine in our brain and that helps us to calm down and relax and prepare for sleep. So all day long, this is kind of accumulating. So caffeine, the molecules in it at a small scientific level um, look very similar to adenosine receptors. So to adenosine molecules, which then combined to the receptors in place of adenosine. So when this happens, it means that the stuff that is naturally binding all day long um, that helps you to feel tired um, as you progress through the day. Instead, it can't actually bind because caffeine's there instead. So this actually causes a cascade of other neurological effects where more neurotransmitters are produced, um, such as dopamine and serotonin. And in doing that, you actually end up having an uplift of energy. I know that is the most basic explanation of it, 
But that's probably the simplest way without going too in depth into it is um, it blocks adenosine receptors and causes a cascade of other neurotransmitters to be produced, therefore causing us to feel awake, energetic, um, and quite good. The downside is it can also cause, if it's just we're talking um, anhydrous caffeine, it can also cause increase of hormones that we don't want, um, such as cortisol, which um, obviously has a few issues with stress, and then you feel quite uncomfortable. And that's why some people, when they have uh, a tea or a coffee, they feel fine. But if they were to have a Red Bull or a V or a Monster or an energy drink, they start to feel jitters and palpitations and distractedness, and they feel really uncomfortable and anxious. Um, it's the same thing, right? Because some people dumb it down and go, they're both caffeine. Um, but it's not. Uh, there's different types of caffeine and what goes with the caffeine. If we're having coffee, it's a whole lot of chlorogenic acids with caffeine absorbed in a different way than um, coming from tea, um, absorbed in a very different way from caffeine and hydrous powder, which is going to be in energy drinks. Yeah, yeah. I love that you said that, that it is different. Yes, it is caffeine, but your it comes with different things. So therefore your body absorbs it in a different way. We seem to always put a blanket across like it is one thing, like sugar is this or like coffee is this. And it's like, no, no, no. Well, the, even, even the caffeine and the cacao and chocolate is different yeah, compared to absolutely. the coffee that we have. It's going to affect us differently. Um, it might be the same dose of even caffeine, but it comes with different things which may block some receptors, might activate other receptors and so forth. Our body is so complicated, but it's so lovely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, are, we are complicated. But yeah, when you're having cacao as well, you get these like beautiful flavonoids and you get uh, theobromine that comes with it as well. So that's a different style of um, uh, uplift as well from a stimulant perspective. So, but this is the exciting thing. Once, once you kind of learn a bit more about how it all works, you can um, create these great products. So what's really lucky is um, eventually these will end up on the market because enough people will demand them because they see it's a really good idea. And then it starts to get created at a more um, commercial scale, which is great. So it's not just mad scientists in a kitchen enjoying it for themselves. Everyone gets to benefit. <laughs> I love that. You mean the mad scientist being you, yeah? <laughs> uh, I love that. I, I love that. I think it is, it's and anyone who understands some of the basics of, of nutrition and how it could work, uh, yourself as well included at this stage. 100%, like you, 100%. you should have <laughs> seen. This is, this is my own little mix right here in this water. It's just not water. You, don't, you, you shouldn't drink just water. There should be so many things in your water to actually absorb the water, but that's a total different story. <laughs> it is. And we, we could start talking about structured water as well if we want. We could go down a long rabbit hole there as well. But I guess water, um, talking about water, it is interest, It is it is important because, okay, you have your coffee, but what water are you then using to make your coffee with also? So that will, that will also make huge benefits. So that's so this argument is often referred to quite a lot with different beers. Um, so Germany often advocates the idea of using particular kinds of water improves the beer a huge amount. So you may have heard this argument before, but the same applies for water. Uh, sorry, for coffee or anything else that's based with water. It might even be a drink. So we're doing a, a, a drink soon. Um, it's going to be a re-release of it. And the base of water that we are using is filtered in a particular way. Uh, and we also try and add a few things to try and add a bit of structure to it. Because um, there's all these little things that you can do, putting water back to its natural vortex and adding a few different ionic plates around it to provide additional benefits. So you're kind of remineralizing it and bringing it back to how it should be when it's free flowing in a yeah. fresh water stream. Yeah. Tell so, us a little bit more about that drink that you just pulled out. Tell us a little bit more about that and the ingredients that you've chosen for that. <laughs> um, so this was the original. This um, came around a couple of years ago. This is the first one. Um, it looks like an eye test. Um, but yeah, the idea was it was the natural drink that helps you think. So with this one, um, I put the kitchen sink in it, um, which was great but it also meant like i couldn't uh keep producing it because there was it was too much stuff in it um but it was great it had a huge amount of ingredients i tried to do um the therapeutic dose uh not necessarily the minimum but a requisite therapeutic dose usually mid-range of ingredients because i was very frustrated in you probably notice this quite a bit um there's nutrition supplements out there. I'm not going to name those. That's not the thing I like to do. But they'll go ahead and they'll use a tiny amount of an ingredient, which is either 
um, at the moment, a hot buzz uh, nutri um, nutrition ingredient, or it's revered for particular properties. However, you need to have a particular amount of it to enjoy these properties and the benefits they provide. And an example might be caffeine. If we're talking about caffeine with the benefits before, if I gave you um, like a tiny, tiny sip of coffee, so therefore you might get two or three milligrams of caffeine, it's not going to do much. But um, people do this in nutrition, but with other supplements. So it might be B vitamins or it might be turmeric or it might be whichever where the science will say it does have all of these amazing benefits that you can see. However, you need a particular dose and it might be a couple grams or it might be, uh, depending on it, it always changes. But the idea is there's an amount required to enjoy the benefits and nutrition. Um, some companies take advantage of that and they give highly sub therapeutic doses. So 5% or 10% of what you actually need to get these benefits. And they do that to save costs. And they do it to then label claim. So then food standards, Australia and New Zealand doesn't, um, doesn't really come down on them too heavily. So they can keep saying, oh, yes, we do this. You, you have this uh, energy bar. And, um, and I'm pretty sure, like, you actually can vomit rainbows. It's amazing. So they have all these crazy, <laughs> they can make these ridiculous claims and they can get away with it. Um, even though all they might have is, they might just have 100 milligrams of turmeric, which if it's not even an extract, that's going to do absolutely nothing. Um, if it's an extract that's standardized for a high percentage of the active ingredient within it, which is curcuminoids, and then it also has something like bioprene or a black pepper extract to improve absorption, then yeah, that might have an advantage if it's at a specific amount for both of those to work well. But if it's not, it's not going to really do much. And there's loads of things on the market that just have tiny amounts of turmeric and talk as if, oh, by having this... All your problems are solved, and it's like, uh, I agree. You know, it's, 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 like, it's like nails on a chalkboard to me. Yeah, and unfortunately, um, so the everyday buyer um, doesn't go into detail like yourself and myself. They understand how much um, dosage is needed for these things to work, for these active ingredients to work, and we just get sucked in and go, "Oh, turmeric drink, amazing!" And it's just water with a little bit of, I don't know, maybe something put in there. And if you made yourself a turmeric latte at home, you would definitely get more turmeric out of that. So it's 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 interesting that you mentioned that it's the whole. We could even do a whole podcast on just the whole labeling and the marketing in in in, in the food and beverages yeah. in Australia. Myths it's, and the dirty side of the nutrition industry exposed. I love like, it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's all these there's all these tactics, and I found when I quit law to go ahead and start doing this and create stuff, I realized how many of these is in the market. Like I, there was already some frustration that there's some like like really not fake products, but just sub therapeutic products out there which provide no benefit but claim as if they do and then i found that there's there's so so much more than what i thought so i made it my my principle at that stage that anything that i use needs to be in an amount required by science same concentration as the scientific studies same amount as the scientific studies everything had to be by the book it was probably like my legal background as well kind of coming into it thinking there has to be proof and evidence but the idea was it had to be appropriate. So if I was going to use ginkgo biloba, it had to be an extract that has 24% glycosides, which I know I'm getting a bit sciencey now, and 120 milligrams um, of that extract because there is a huge amount of science suggesting that extract at that strength, at that amount, has all of these benefits. Um, and that's how it could and should be done. But instead, you'll see products out there that just use ginkgo biloba not an extract, just the leaf, and they'll use 100 milligrams, which is a random arbitrary amount that was picked out of nowhere, and they claim as if it has all those benefits, which kills me because when we're using a 50 to 1 extract, which we are, 120 milligrams is the same as 6 grams. So we're using 6 grams, so that's what you require for the benefits, and then you have these other products that have maybe 100 milligrams. It's like we use 60 times more than you. So that's these are the huge benefits. huge difference. Yeah, but they get away with it and people have no idea. Um, so anyway, ginkgo was uh, one of the 20 ingredients in the original formula. Um, yeah, we we went a bit over the top, to be honest. Um, and so the, the newer one, we just kind of thought, well, what's the purpose of it? Instead of having a shotgun approach that does everything for, for brain health, we thought, what, what do we really want to try and do? And that's when we created two separate areas, two avenues for it. So one was all about mental performance. We thought we'll pair it with coffee. 
because most people who drink coffee like the uplift and the performance enhancing side of it. Um, so let's make that better and add things that potentiate caffeine um, from coffee and make it a healthier experience and elongate um, the process, improve mood, reduce stress, and also give people an improved sense of uh, focus. So when they're having a coffee just to get through the day or to, um, I don't know, it could be anything, really, just start their day and just have a bit of productive morning, um, this will help out. While the next one, we try to think what are things that we can do that will really improve people's mood, reduce stress, but also give their brain a general uplift and boost, but be more kind of short term and medium term. So they will increase in effectiveness day after day, um, but they're slightly more focused star formulas as opposed to this that was 20 ingredients in one. We reduced it down to, so that's, this is 14, this is 14, and yep. they're slightly different. Yeah. So what would be one key ingredient that you absolutely love in the coffee one? And what's one key ingredient in the drink one that you love that you can tell us a bit about that's going to help? Ooh. So so my favorite um, is probably, um, I'm going to discuss Panax Ginseng. Um, it, my favorite would be Rhodiola Rosea, but I want to discuss Panax Ginseng because I think it's really important to go into detail on because a lot of people um, will see ginseng and they just think straight away, oh gosh, yeah, well, they're all the same and they're not. There's Chinese ginseng, which is not for ginseng. There's Japanese or red ginseng, which is Panax ginseng, which is what I use. Um, there's an American ginseng. Um, and then there's something that's not even a ginseng. It's a shrub and it's called Siberian ginseng. Um, and that's the one you see most often. Now, I think that's pronounced Eleutheru, and forgive me if I've mispronounced that to those listening who just heard me make an error there. I think it's that. Um, and so with that one, um, it does have good properties, but not nearly the extent of the properties that American ginseng or Korean ginseng has. So when we're choosing that, I wanted to use Panax ginseng because of the way that actually potentiates the effect of caffeine and also all of the benefits from a mental health perspective. So that's why we chose that. It's way more expensive than Siberian ginseng, which is why Siberian ginseng is a popular choice. You'll see that one. Everywhere. Quite a yeah, yeah. It's, it's like... It's so cheap and that's why people prefer to use it. And the average consumer doesn't know the difference between Siberian, Korean, American, ginseng. They don't realise. They just see ginseng and think it's all the same. So um, the marketing team of making these um, products prey upon that, which I don't think is really nice. So the reason I wanted to talk about Panax ginseng is because we went to a ton of effort to choose um, our type of ginseng and why. We almost went American, we went Panax in the end. Um, it is expensive. Um, the extract that we ended up using is over $500 a kilo. Um, but there is, and for example, say Siberian is usually 20 to 30 bucks a kilo. So just provide an example of how different they are. Um, and why we wanted to use Panax is because it has a multitude of effects for brain health as opposed to just physical health. Um, and that's what we really wanted. And especially because there's some studies talking about how caffeine and panax ginseng work together and form a beautiful synergy, um, which also works with L-theanine, which is another ingredient that we use. And so that was the whole idea, not just to add two things that are nice, but you can add two things that bring out the best in each other with ingredients. And so therefore the sum of its parts is greater than the whole. We thought this, we're onto something. And that was why I really like Panax ginseng. Yeah, working uh, together in synergy. I love that. And that's how herbs and supplements and minerals, vitamins work together. They usually don't work alone when you when you extract that thing, uh, that ingredient. It's working in synergy together. And that's when you get yeah. the most benefit from them. Correct. And that's another reason why, where possible, we try and go for full spectrum. The idea of um, cofactors and the necessity for synergy. A lot of people, when they're just going for an extract, um, if it's just standardized for one little thing, it might not be as well absorbed because uh, in nature, that doesn't exist by itself. It exists with loads of things, i.e. caffeine by itself does not exist in nature. So when you go ahead and you pick up a can of Red Bull, I know I keep saying Red Bull, um, just uh, an energy drink. So it has just pure caffeine powder. That doesn't exist in nature. 
Um, it's normally um, paired with quite a few other ingredients, um, whether it's in coffee or chocolate, go to cola, et cetera, and they help the absorption. And so when we don't have that there, it doesn't, doesn't absorb as well and it has a different effect than what it should be or could be. And your body and reacts so, differently. Like, it goes, what's this? You go, oh, what's this, what's this uh, you know, molecule? I don't know. I can't understand this. But when it comes with something like a transporter or something on those lines, you're like, okay. Your body goes, okay, we can relax now. We know what this is. We know we've dealt yeah. with this before. This comes together. We know this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's not freaking out going how do i do i, do I get rid of it is it a poison like yeah, yeah yeah exactly exactly so what about the new the new drink um what's the favorite thing out of there or is that also the um ginseng the panic ginseng no i i think i only just like half of it about ginseng is because um we were just so i, I was probably just uh, went on such a huge rant because we spent ages figuring out which ginseng and why you're so excited <laughs> Yeah, we were. And then and then people or just go, oh, ginseng, oh, yeah, that's just, yeah, that's everywhere. And I'm like, no, it's not. The shrub is, which isn't actually even a ginseng um, because it doesn't actually have ginsenicides, which are the active ingredients in ginseng. Um, annoyingly enough, it's just called Siberian ginseng, but it shouldn't be. Um, anyway, so rhodiola rosea is probably another ingredient that I absolutely love and ashwagandha. Um, <laughs> So those herbs are probably the most um, potent ones in the formulation. We use them all again um, at high full spectrum doses, standardized for particular extracts. Um, and yeah, they work phenomenally well. So I'm a huge fan of that. Uh, I also really like using L-theanine um, with caffeine. And I'm sure a lot of people are aware that, oh, so our caffeine as well, we get it from a green tea and a green coffee bean extract. So it comes from a natural form of caffeine. And when you combine it with L-theanine, which is naturally occurring in green tea and also some mushrooms, it, they have, it again, a phenomenal synergy. And a lot of people refer to it as the original nootropic stack. Um, nootropic mean um, mind-enhancing supplements. Um, or drugs and so yeah they're phenomenal together so they were always the, a, a go-to base of anything that I was doing in university and previous um, it just helps the caffeine to not make you jittery but instead just kind of let you zone in when it's combined with l -theanine. so the whole idea of this is helping people to, to zone in get in a bit of more of a flow state um, and just be more savvy I guess so that was the whole idea is what can we do to take people from where they are to the place they want to be, um, which is that energetic state with better mood, reduced stress, and just feeling really, really good. Because supplements on the market um, and energy drinks, they're all using the same approach, which is stimulant, stimulant, stimulant. And we wanted to reimagine the concept of what energy is and instead take away the two most common deterrents to energy, which is low mood and stress. Like you can have all the coffee in the world, but if you're stressed out and you're and you're feeling really, really like you're just not happy, there's something not right, maybe you're having a fight with your partner or whatever, you're in a bad mood, you can have all the coffee you want in the world. You're not going to get much done that day. So for us, we were like, what can we do to help people have improved sense of mood and also reduction of stress whilst also giving them um, important things to assist with its own energy production. So we, that's why we have the chain of the vitamins, um, B vitamins, as opposed to just one or two that others seem to have. From what you were saying before, you need them all there to be properly utilized and absorbed in methylated variations um, and plant-based variations where possible to improve absorption. Um, I love that. Yeah. And you can imagine, you know, you being working in a corporate field and myself also previously working in a corporate field and knowing individuals and individuals who may be listening to the podcast may currently have a business that they're running. And stress is just a normal thing that just learn to deal with or haven't learned to deal with and they're just pushed it aside. And like you said, it's going to be there, especially when you're running your own business. You know, your to-do list is forever growing. There's no end to it until you're maybe 70, 80 years old. <laughs> um, you know, there's clients <laughs> calling you all the time, customers. It's just an ongoing thing, but it's kind of like, okay, how can we manage this to a point where I'm actually enjoying this, I'm having fun, I'm doing what I want to do, and this is where, you know, things like all of these herbs and all of these supplements and something that we drink every day can help us. So having, you know, 
It's kind of like, um, you know, supercharging your coffee to help you deal with those clients and customers, not just to focus and have the focus and the energy, you know, mental energy to do that, which coffee does already. Um, I love that you've put that together. And, you know, when I came across it, the first thing that I did is, is I looked at the ingredients and I was like, (laughs) the first thing is I love coffee. I was like, okay, it has to be organic. Let me see. Punk, tick. I was like, oh my gosh, it's got all the vitamins. (laughs) Tick. It's got this, this. So um, that's what I loved about it. And the thing is, is, and, and it's, it's, it's the great concept of I love when people work with water and I love when people work with coffee because it's already in people's routine. People don't have to add anything in. All they have yeah. to do is just substitute it to another brand or something else because it's already in their routine. It's already a normal part of culture. Whereas these days, you know, supplements have got sometimes a really bad name. Some herbs got a bad name due to the media around there and things like that. And, you know, popping pills is sometimes has a bit of a negative concept for depending negative who you talk to. Yeah. 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 Depending who you talk to. So it's kind of like, wow, you have this coffee and it's just going to assist in a way to what you're really doing it so why not just you know substitute it to something that try and substitute and see if that helps you 100 percent. and i just thought as well it's just a time saver like for all parents for all professionals students hell like i doubt you'd find anyone who doesn't admit the fact that they're time poor um it's just so easy to think i'm getting all of my um b vitamin um recommended daily intake in fact beyond that um in one cup and then i'm getting all of these herbs gonna be phenomenal to just make me feel good just straight away with it a reduction of stress and improvement of mood and a longer sense of focus and energy like it's the ideal kind of way to kick start the day and then if people know enough about the why they work they'll understand as well it's assisting with the energy currency of cells being atp it's assisting with krebs cycle um there's a variety of additional things that it's doing um if they know the science great if they don't that's cool like even if they just go ahead and they think i feel better and i feel energetic that's that's enough for us um yeah, because, I love yeah, that. it works I love that. I love that. So look, let's 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 talk about are there any other products on the market that do anything similar to what you're doing um, in regards to the ingredients that you've spoken about? I know you said, you know, your your specialty is, you know, spe- choosing these specific herbs, choosing <laughs> these specific minerals and vitamins and things like that. Um, so what would you say is the key difference? Um, just summing it up, what the key difference is in regards to your your, your products compared to something that you might find on the market? So I, I don't like bad mouthing other people's products. Um, ironically, it's well because you bump into them and then it, it just gets awkward. Um, and everyone and everyone is kind of like doing in some regard the right thing. I actually have a variety of friends who work in, um, who work in online um, e-commerce businesses in health. Um, and some of them do a phenomenal job. Others um, m- might not as much. So as for products that are similar, uh, the first one that pops into my head is a company called Neurotech. Um, so they have they used to have pills, but then unfortunately TGA was saying you're not allowed to have pills and capsules anymore. So now they're re-releasing it as a powder. Um, they advocate for the same principles that I do, which is if you're going to have it, it's got to be at the correct amount and the correct necessary I love uh, that. necessary amount. So it has a benefit. Like don't label claim. Label claiming is putting stuff in just to say that it's in there. It's not going to serve a purpose. It's a waste of space. So if you're going to put it in, it has to serve, um, it has to be at the amount required to have a benefit. It has to work. So they're a great company that do it. Um, products that are on the market uh, that do the coffee style, um, there are some that are on the market and they use and they use uh, good ingredients. But my thing uh, would be look at the amounts of ingredients that they're using. Uh, Mm -hmm. most of them don't disclose the amounts of the ingredients and they don't disclose them on purpose because like um, proprietary formulas, it's because they don't want you to know they have um, a tiny, tiny amount which is going to do nothing. They want you to instead look at it and go, oh, gosh, it's got um, alpha GPC in here or it's got, wow, it's got rhodiol rosea. I heard that's really good. Um, they don't want you to know they have a tiny amount. So, um, so, so be smart space. in regards to reading the label and understanding. And what I always say is if you don't know, contact the company. These people always have yeah. a contact us. Um, and, you know, you can contact Mark. If you have any information or you want to know a little <laughs> bit, contact him, ask him, drill him. <laughs> so yeah, you we'll get, have a chat. I'll- yeah, so you get the information that you want just because I think, 
it's a good product may not mean that you do. Um, you might want it for a specific reason. Contact that specific company and not just coffee. Contact, you know, if you're having a shampoo, contact that company. Contact them all and ask them information. I'm I'm known for, I've contacted so many plant-based milks. <laughs> I've got, they're like probably <laughs> sick of me. I've contacted them and, and the stuff is, I know I make my decision on this milk now because I have spoken to those individuals because I know how those almonds are made. I know how that soy is grown. I know what's in it and that's why I've chosen that. So the same with your coffee, contact the individuals and contact the company so it fits your values, you know, and, and that's how amazing is that, that we're currently living in a world where we can choose where our money goes based on our values. That's amazing. Yeah. And like, it's, it's beautiful when they allow you to make that choice with full transparency. So my main piece of advice, if we're talking nutrition is look for a nutrition information panel. And also look for the ingredients. They're listed from weight heaviest to least heavy. Um, and some places will not have a, an advanced nutritional panel, as in they'll try and hide uh, the amounts of the active ingredients in there. So my advice would be tread cautiously. When you see lots of exciting uh, marketing jargon saying, oh, it's whiz bang with all these benefits, because those benefits come from the ingredients. They have to be a particular type and a particular amount. And if they're not willing to show you that, they probably have something to hide. So you'd wanna see something that looks um, like that, that explains everything really clearly, everything really clearly. Um, and if they're not willing to do that, um, there's probably that. a reason why they weren't willing to do that. I love that. And I guess, you know, you having a history in law, you would make sure that, that it's done properly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah, I love that. A little, a little bit nerdy with that. But yeah, I, I love the fact that you look into things like shampoo and stuff. I've only recently started properly considering all the stuff that's in my space, whether it be cologne, shampoo, etc. I stopped using um certain kinds of deodorant a while ago. Um, but I've only just started looking into more and more and more and realizing why and how. So that journey is again, kind of starting for me, yeah. but it's really and, cool because- And we're so blessed oh, that we can, we have that opportunity yeah. to ask why and how. And fortunate enough here in Australia, we, you know, we, we most of us have that income where we're able to choose, um, which is absolutely amazing. And when you look at it further in the long run, you may, like, for example, the um, organic fair trade coffee, you may pay that 50 cents extra, but later on, that means that you're not going to get those toxins build up in your body that later on that means you're not going to get that diagnosis and sit in the office with your doctor you know and if that's 50 cents every day that's 50 cents every day that's fine i'm happy to do that and i'm pretty sure the listeners yeah. are too so what would you say would be some practical tips for the audience to incorporate if they wish to optimize their mental performance um every day what would you say would be a few practical tips for them Ooh, cracking question. Um, so I think, uh, so we, we've probably covered like a load on supplements and, uh, and coffee and nutrition at this stage, but um, that would be one thing to definitely start with is make sure that your diet is nutritive um, and you're eating healthy. If you're adding supplements, that's fantastic. Um, just because the average diet usually doesn't have as much nutrients as we do require, especially if we're active. Um, the next thing would be, if you really want to try and get into that state, everyone's got a different regime. As I was saying before, like you'll hear people say, get up at four and then you do this, 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 this. And you don't need a morning routine. It helps, sure. Um, and you don't need a more an evening routine. It helps, sure. But just do what works best for you. Um, what I did is I tried everything. I tried every little routine it could potentially um, do and every evening routine. And I tried all this stuff just so I could then see what's good for me and what's not good for me. In the same idea that you try a couple of sports and you see which one you like, or you try different styles of exercising, whatever. So I realized that I really enjoy um, getting up early and going to sleep earlier, as opposed to getting up later and going to sleep later. For me, that's good. For some people, it's not. So my first little thing would be getting up a little bit earlier. The reason why I like it is because it makes me feel productive and it makes me feel like I'm getting up before others. So I have a couple hours of me time just to get what I want to get done before my phone starts buzzing and emails start coming in. Um, the next thing would be cold showers. Cold thermogenesis is so good. Um, even in winter, which I know um, some people are a bit like, Ugh. my girlfriend gets really angry at me because 
I'll have a cold shower and then she'll um, go in the shower a few minutes after the water's icy cold still. And she's going to put it on, <laughs> you know, a shriek because <laughs> it's still cold. Um, and then like the, the tiles get cold as well. But anyway, um, at the start, what I used to do with the cold shower thing is you have a regular shower and you end with like 10, 15, 20 seconds of cold and you build it up. So in the ratio of cold to hot over time slowly switches to more cold than hot. Um, I built this up over to be honest, like a month or so. So baby steps um, is a great way to start. But now I'm in a stage when I haven't touched the hot tap for like a year or so, um, which is kind of cool. So kind of weird and like masochistic in a way, but anyway. Um, so that's one thing. Reason why is stimulates vagus nerve, which is phenomenal along with cranial nerve. Um, phenomenal benefit in doing that. And you can get that benefit with honestly two minutes of cold water on your noggin. Um, also good for any blokes out there who are in their 20s, 30s, 40s who are having thinning hair issues. Um, cold water equals hair staying on head longer. So that's another benefit. Um, also good for skin and the rest of it. Um, so, and also if you're concerned about the body side, it also benefits from uh, a body image perspective. The next one is probably uh, meditation, breathing exercises and journaling. I lump them together for time efficiency. Um, but again, some people do them in different orders. So for me, uh, it's, uh, I like box breathing. I also like the idea of power breathing, which is that kind of insane breathing in as fast as you can, 50, and then um, really deep um, for 10. And then the next set, I do like two or three sets. And then you get this kind of tingling sensation as there's um, additional amounts of oxygen in your blood. Um, and then in that kind of peak state, um, I will then try and write down some gratitude and some I am mantras. So I really focus as I, as I write it down, I say it aloud and I really focus upon that particular thing. And then I then go to the next and the next and the next. Um, so that's great. So the routine and order would be um, breathing exercises, meditation, um, gratitude, and really focusing on it. And then I am mantras, where it's basically a bit of a pump up routine of saying things. I was writing down some things. I try and write down 10 and 10. Um, that's Those are probably the most basic ones. Journaling before bed and trying to have a, an actual scheduled bedtime. Um, was a bit of a cool one. I have alarms set on my phone every day to remind me to go to bed, um, which I know sounds kind of weird, but it works. Um, so those are probably the most quick ones that I can think of at the top of my I love head that. You've just, difference. you quick ones, but they're s like, if we, we could literally talk an hour on each one of them and what benefit that brings to optimal health and success, because as a business owner as an individual, all of those things that you mentioned can directly be linked to success, which I absolutely love, 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 love. So to yeah. finish off, I ask all my guests, as this is a natural health podcast, what is your best capped natural health hack? And I know you mentioned a few already <laughs> there. Is there one that's like, that's my health hack and that's that's just changed my world? Ooh, um, so one for productivity, writing a to-do list before you go to sleep uh, and also journaling how you went that day. Um, kind of gets you pumped up to get more things done the next day and also be writing it the day before and then reviewing it the morning of is great. Um, uh, my health hack, which I can't live without, something like mind boggling and like, whoa, it's just I get up and go to the gym straight away. I need to start my day with exercise. That's just me. On days when I don't exercise, I feel a little bit just uh, not lethargic, but I just don't feel like I normally do. Normally, I'm pretty full of energy, um, and I like to think it's because of good food, nutrition as a base, and good little um, health hacks and practices. Um, so for me, it's just about constantly uh, trying to find ways to grow and expand. So having little things each day that you know have a benefit, um, whether it be singing in the shower, dancing in the shower whilst there's cold water, there's three separate ways that my vagal nerve turn is being, um, my vagus nerve is being stimulated, which I know has a multitude of factors to feel good. So that's one little hack that's great. So for me, my ultimate hack is just find out what's the practice that has a benefit, what are other practices that provide the same benefit, and find a way to combine them for time efficiency. I love um, that. I love that. that. You, you can, you can start done. humming also. Hum in the shower while you're having a cold yeah, shower. Yeah, like dance. Hum, that's, <laughs> sing, singing, singing or humming is more and or less gargle, the same gargle. Yeah, gargling does it as well. Yeah, so <laughs> it's, it's it. hilarious. So you won't feel like it, but I'll, be, I'll just chuck on any old song and my neighbours probably hate it. 
Um, and yeah, it'll be like 10 to 5 in the morning and I'll be singing it. I love it. I love it. It's great. It works. Um, and other ones as well as just find small things to, to learn and to grow in different facets. A lot of people think that once you reach a certain age, that's when you've, you've done your things. Um, my recent acquisition has been a keyboard. Um, I'm so far not particularly good, but I've learned some basic chords and now I can play some basic songs. So I have a Halo Sport, which helps to stimulate uh, motor neurons. So again, combining two or three separate little, like it's where there's so many different things. There's wearable tech and there's all the rest of it. So for me, combining things for a greater benefit um, or synergy to use that um, term again, I find it time efficient and attractive. So my biggest thing is just time efficiency. I love as, that. I love as, that. As a, as a hack. hack. Yeah, beautiful. Well, thank <laughs> you so, so much for all of the information you've provided us with on today's podcast. Thank you for sharing your amazing products with us, giving us the inside and out of Nootropics and mental performance, how coffee works and everything. Really, really appreciate it. And giving us so many health hacks that we're just going to go and just start doing our own little routines. I love it. I love it. Absolutely love it. So if anyone wants to get in touch with you, what is the best way uh, to touch base with you? Um, well, gosh, like uh, you can email me at mark at savvybeverage.com or just check out savvybeverage.com um, or our Instagram handle at Savvy Beverages. Those are probably the easiest ways to get in touch with me. Beautiful. And I'll put them all in the show notes to be able to access it. And thank you so much for being on a natural podcast. I really appreciate your time, Mark. Oh, thank you so, so much. I'll also happily give all your listeners um, a discount. I'll share that with you so you can put that in the show notes as well. We'll do. Um, but guys, I hope I didn't bore you to death. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs> thank you for joining us at the natural podcast. And remember the missing link between failure and success is your health. Content and information provided here is opinion of Mahela Raguse and is for information purposes only and does not constitute medical advice. It is not intended to provide medical advice or take the place of medical advice or any current treatment you're undertaking. Consult your own medical professionals for any medical issues that you may be having. This entire disclaimer also applies to any guests or contributors to the Natural Health Podcast. It is advised that you consult your doctor or healthcare professional in relation to any health concerns you may be having. Mahela Raguse does not take responsibility for any health consequences which occur from a person listening, viewing, or reading this content. And in a circumstances, Circumstances shall the natural podcast. Mahela Raguse, any guests or contributors to the natural podcast, or any employees, associates, or affiliates of Mahela Raguse be responsible for damages arising from the information provided on the natural podcast. By listening to this podcast, you agree not to use this podcast as medical advice to treat any medical conditions in either yourself or others. Please note if you're taking prescription, do not stop your medication or start a new protocol, including but not limited to supplements diet, lifestyle changes without consulting your doctor or healthcare professional. If you or any person has a medical concern, you should consult with your healthcare provider or seek other professional medical advice. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something that you have read or heard on the natural podcast or in any linked materials. If you think you may have a medical emergency, call your doctor or emergency services immediately. Neither Mahela Raguse nor the publisher of this context takes responsibility for the possible health consequences of any person or persons reading or listening or following the information in educational content.